Power Health and Allied Insurance. He's joining us to take some questions. Anand, great to have you with us here. Good morning. Appreciate your time. Uh, you know, if you look at uh, monthly premium numbers, Anand, uh, over the last six, five to six months, you've been growing at about half the industry average. Uh, could you tell us uh, what's been happening? What is the reason? And uh, how do you see things going forward? Morning, Prashant. Thanks for having me. Uh, as I've said earlier during our interactions, uh, the company's focus is on retail business, and we are growing at uh, almost 50% higher than the industry as far as our retail uh, business is concerned, which is the main focus area of Star Health. Uh, we have taken some strategic calls to reduce our group exposure, that is a corporate business exposure, and as a result of which the headline growth is little muted this year, mm -hmm. but that's part of a strategy that's happening by design, and we expect that from next financial onwards, that will even out. Okay, so uh, from a shareholder perspective, can you explain it to us? Uh, now that you have sort of uh, shifting your business more towards individual health products, what would the mix be over the next one year or so? And what would the impact be on growth? So this year, the growth will be, uh, we are estimating around uh, 18 to 20 percent growth on an overall basis, 18 percent growth around uh, uh, top line numbers, but we expect to grow 20 to 25 percent on the retail side. That's mm -hmm. our uh, uh, estimate. Mm -hmm. But uh, from the next year, uh, we have traditionally been growing much faster than the industry always, and we expect that to continue. Uh, we hope that, you know, from next year onwards, on an overall basis, we should be um, you know, registering 20% uh, plus growths. Okay, all right. Anand, what about, uh, you know, this growth? How much of it will be price-led? So the price hikes and the price uh, increase due to age revision, uh, you know, age increases within the policy, I think that contributes around 8 to 10% of our premium growth. And the balance comes from, you know, uh, new business and new initiatives. Mm. Uh, so, as this transition happens and there is a higher share of individual health products, naturally, I assume your margins would also increase. How much would they increase to? Yeah, absolutely. And if you look at our performance for the last two quarters, we have been profitable both in quarter one and quarter two. Quarter two, a uh, little bit uh, muted on the underwriting profits because, you know, it was a season of monsoons and we saw a huge inflow of monsoon-related uh, uh, claims. But then, you know, health insurance is a seasonal business. You know, we don't really, uh, you know, uh, we cannot measure it quarter to quarter. And on an annual basis, this year, we expect that our, uh, you know, combined ratios will play out around 93 to 95%. Mm -hmm. And we will make uh, substantial underwriting profits as well as uh, we will be able to deliver all the projections that we have uh, highlighted during our calls. Anand, sorry, by when you said? Sub uh, substantial underwriting profits? So, uh, Prashant, as we speak, even in, uh, if you look at H1, the mm -hmm. company has uh, a net profit of more than uh, 300 crores has registered. Uh, it's only the quarter two, the underwriting profits were muted, but the company registered a net profit of 100, close to 100 crores even in quarter two. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we are a profitable, back to the profitable ways of doing business. And as we end the year, our combined ratio should be around 93 to 95%. Mm -hmm. 93 to 95 percent combined ratio for the full year. Okay, uh, fair enough. Uh, could you tell us what have you been picking up? Uh, uh, what we've been picking up from sources is that the expenses of management ratio uh, would be uh, set at about uh, standalone health insurance companies would be set at about 35 uh, percent, which will go down half a percent every year. Uh, I think you and I have, uh, we've discussed this before. Would this be a doable target according to you? Uh, and uh, and, and is, is it workable uh, or do you think this needs more deliberation? No, I think it has been uh, deliberated enough and I think uh, this is the final outcome of all the deliberations. And we believe that this is definitely workable. Uh, insurance companies uh, have to operate within, you know, set uh, margins so that, you know, the policyholders get the maximum benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as I can speak for Star Health, you know, our operating expenses are already lesser than 30%. Uh, so we are operating in a very lean and mean fashion. And we expect that 35% is a fair enough margin for any company to operate. Mm. You spoke about a 20% growth going forward in the next year. But I was just looking at the data for, say, the past six to eight quarters. You were growing at a faster rate than the industry during COVID. But post-COVID, that has slowed down a bit. Uh, the industry is growing at almost, you know, 25-30% as of the April data that we have. Uh, any reason for that? 
Yeah, Sonia, so that growth is largely led by the group business. Okay. Uh, we are more focused on the retail side. We are a B2C player. So on the B2C side, we are growing at 50% faster than the industry. Even today with a very large base, you have to understand that Star Health is the largest player in the retail segment. We have 34% mark market share. We have, in, in fact, increased our market share by two percentage points this quarter. So I think uh, that's our focus area and we'll continue to be there. Okay. All right. We will leave it at that. Thanks a lot uh, for joining in. All the best. Uh, so that is Star Health Insurance talking about their retail business, seeing a 20 to 